It's a great pleasure and privilege to have a chance to talk to Peter Mathias. I hope I can call you Peter. Good um, Peter. I will reciprocate. <laughs> Good. Peter, uh, when and where were you born? I was born uh, in uh, Freshford Cottage Hospital on the 10th of January 1928. Um, my father was in the Navy and I did not see him until, he were, until I was uh, over two years old. Um, my mother uh, had gone back to uh, live with her parents uh, um, for the birth. Although she'd been uh, uh, close to uh, uh, her parents uh, uh, before then, and um, uh, that was uh, um, uh, conditional upon my my father's movements uh, in the, in a warship. He was uh, uh, a petty officer then, uh, as, a, as a as a petty officer writer. That is to say, he kept the books on a warship, and uh, he was uh, on a goodwill visit. Uh, uh, to round the down the east coast of the United States uh, uh, on a, Porsche, a cruiser HMS Cape Town, and uh, he returned in 1930, and uh, then my pa my mother uh, uh, went to live uh, in a rented flat in Plymouth, close to Devonport, which was his, where his base was. Uh, he was retired from the navy at the age of 40, I think, in 1932, which was a, um, a compulsory exit point for non-commissioned ranks. And uh, it was the worst year, of course, of the slump in 1932. And uh, he, and, and Plymouth then was a very small uh, town. And he failed to get a job in Plymouth to his liking, a clerical job. And the closest uh, uh, that he could uh, find employment was in Bristol, and he became a clerk in the Bristol and West Building Society. And uh, they rented a house and then bought a house uh, he, he, uh, through the Bristol and West Building Society over many years. Um, and I went, uh, therefore, uh, to school in Bishop Road, prim Bishop Road Elementary School, as it then mm -hmm. was, rather mm -hmm. than primary school. Mm -hmm. um, and that gave me a slight uh, Bristol accent, I think, or possibly, a, <laughs> West country possibly, accent. possibly a, a Wiltshire accent, I'm not mm. quite sure. Mm. Um, but then uh, he, uh, you, you didn't uh, leave the Navy, you were transferred to the Naval Reserve, uh, if you were, uh, if you'd been a member of the, uh, uh, of the permanent Navy, the Royal mm. Navy, and therefore he was called up again at Munich. And uh, 1938, and I had just won a scholarship from uh, Bishop Road to Colston's Hospital, as it then was then called, which was a local charity school. Um, at, at that time, a direct grant to grammar school, essentially, and therefore, and that was without any charge to my parents, and that made a big difference. Uh, to, to them, so that's why I chose uh, uh, Colston's uh, as distinct from um, um, oh, the grammar school and Cotton and other, other schools which were part of the scholarship scheme then. Um, but it meant that I went, went off to school um, in 1938 when my father left and my mother didn't want to live alone, so she went back to live with her parents again for the uh, duration of the war until 1946, uh, and um, I s spent uh, the holidays. Uh, this was a boarding my, a boarding school, was it? It was indeed. Yes, mm. Uh, mm. it was a merchant venturer, mm. um, f funded or supported uh, boarding school. Um, what can I? Tell me something about your mother. Uh, yes, um, as as a person. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was very surprising that my mother and fa father ever met because my, my mother um, was the sixth child, I think it was, out of a family of nine, um, living in a, uh, a small uh, village, Wingfield, uh, 
Uh, I'm much involved in this just at the minute because uh, I'm arranging to have a memorial plaque for my mother and father put into the uh, into the churchyard at uh, at Wingfield. Uh, uh, she was a uh, daughter of uh, uh, a long-standing uh, family living in Wingfield for over, oh, at least four generations, um, called Love, and they lived appropriately in Love's Lane, as it's mm. still called. And uh, they were all servants uh, at the uh, in the local gentry house, Wingfield House, uh, which was uh, at, at that time and owned by the uh, the Kayard family, and uh, my f my my grandfather had was uh, uh, ran the stables in uh, in the Wingfield House, and my grandfather was um, uh, well, he, as a boy he was in the kitchens, and then subsequently, when the head of the family then became a county court judge uh, on a circuit. My, 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 my grandfather became uh, a court usher. That is to say he was a personal servant really of the judge mm. and arranged all the practical matters uh, when the judge was on circuit. Um, Do, and, you're talking about two different grandfathers because you mentioned one who was uh, in charge of the stables. That is my great grandfather. Ah, your my great -grand. yeah. Daniel, Daniel Love and my father, was, my grandfather was uh, was the usher. Uh, T. W. Love, Tom Love, mm -hmm. uh, who was a pillar of the village uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, in all kinds of ways. Um, and he brought up nine children, three of whom, uh, they all reached maturity but did not live as adults all that long. There were, uh, uh, two, uh, two of the boys died and one girl, all of TB, and it was thought to be probably milk-born mm -hmm. uh, tuberculosis in those days. Um, but it meant that Wingfield and the Love family were um, my, I identified with them very much more than my father's family for a particular reason. Uh, that my father was, um, was born and brought up when he was, before he had his own say in the matter, as a dedicated Catholic, um, a, a Irish Catholic uh, uh, descent, and my father's mother uh, kept a, uh, um, a, a boarding house for seamen in just opposite the Royal Marine Barracks in, uh, in, in, uh, in Plymouth. Um, but uh, he uh, was, I think, never, uh, never um, uh, within the faith in any, in any uh, dedicated sense. But he met my mother. Uh, when there was a Navy Day in Weymouth, uh, Weymouth Bay, and uh, the family went off to, to Weymouth as they did very regularly, and uh, they coincided on a Navy Day, and uh, my mother met my father uh, when he was showing her around his, his warship, and uh, they, uh, they kept in touch, and uh, as far as his religion was concerned, my father was really absorbed into uh, into my mother's family. So your mother's religion was? They were um, traditional rural village Anglicans essentially and mm -hmm. always had been. My grandfather was uh, needless to say as a long-standing um, uh, 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 re resident and of, of not just himself a resident but of, but of a of a, of a family of a three or four generations. He was the people's warden, he was church warden, mm -hmm. uh, as well as many other things in the village. And um, uh, my father was, uh, was really absorbed into, in, 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 into, into that. Although he had, uh, he was fascinated by uh, yoga, and uh, uh, I, I, I think also, um, of course he traveled very extensively, mm -hmm. And, um, and and had um, uh, and had interests in, uh, in in Eastern religions, but not of any uh, any any uh, uh, deeply structured uh, mm. kind. But um, did either of them usually come to religion at some point in <laughs> our discussions? Um, 
did either of their religions or any religion have a serious effect on your life? Uh, not, not, uh, not. I think consciously. Although um, the main decision uh, on Sundays was whether the uh, weather was good enough to be able, and the the the, uh, the fields were good enough to be able to go to church. Uh, uh, for the 11 o'clock service uh, over the fields or whether we had to walk around the road. <laughs> um, uh, that, uh, my mother was, my, my mother was very, uh, was, was very, uh, very faithful uh, within the Anglican uh, 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 faith and uh, all the family really were and they, they had their own uh, burial plot in the churchyard and so on. They were very, very much uh, uh, identified with the village and identified with the church in the village and so on. Um, what happened with your own beliefs? I mean, did you remain an Anglican? Are you an Anglican? Or I went to uh, Colston's, uh, uh, as I said, and that was a very old style um, uh, English uh, uh, I hesitate to use an adjective for, for it. It was, uh, um, it was um, in in part it aped the public school tradition, but uh, it was um, and it, as, as far as the uh, the the, the, uh, the religious uh, identification, that was quite certainly uh, uh, specific to uh, uh, to. Um, uh, uh, the Anglican Church, and one marched across uh, uh, Stapleton Road to the Stapleton Parish Church uh, every morning. I don't mean every morning, I mean every Sunday morning, mm. and up to the fifth form, they wore stiff eaten collars outside, um, and uh, there was uh, uh, a chapel every morning. Uh, there were prayers every every evening, so it was uh, it was specifically identified, and it, it had a compulsory core and and all that. Mm. Um, uh, so, in, in some ways, it had all the disadvantages of the English public school tradition, and very few of the advantages. <laughs> uh, but I was never able to tell uh, to what extent the uh, the, the uh, inadequacies of the school were based upon wartime emergencies or whether it was just long-standing uh, tradition because it was a very poor school, mm. in poor in uh, financially, in financial terms and poor in, in other ways too. And all that was compounded by the, uh, mm. by the war when uh, most of the able-bodied people uh, went, off to, uh, mm. went off to the war one way or another. And, uh, College, the school picked up the pieces. Uh, mm. in, in my, uh, and on the whole, the school was a very good uh, uh, teaching organisation uh, up to matriculation. But after matriculation, it was not a serious uh, educational establishment, uh, um, and more particularly in wartime, when all these mm. uh, weaknesses were compounded. And when I. Uh, uh, past my matriculation, or O levels as we would now call it, there was no one teaching history at all in the sixth form, and I had to go for one hour a week uh, uh, down to the grammar school uh, for a sort of tutorial. Were you already interested in history as a? Um, uh, yes, I, I, I was. Um, um, but on the other hand, uh, as far as my uh, results were concerned, uh, there was nothing to choose between uh, the science side of the, of the sixth form or the, uh, or the art side of the sixth form, but, I, but I, I, was, I, I was interested in history and therefore I took, that, um, took that option. Do you remember any teachers who were a little bit unusual in encouraging you at any stage? Or? Um, in my, I, I spent an, an, an inordinate amount of time in the, in the sixth form, 
because um, uh, uh, there was really nothing else to do until one was uh, called up at the, uh, the age of 18. Mm. And uh, I had taken the scholarship here, uh, or tried to take the scholarship here, uh, in 1945, when I was already elderly for the, for the sixth form, having been, uh, having gone to the school in 1938 at the age of 11, um, at the age of 10, I suppose, or 10 and a bit mm. anyway, mm. 10 and a half, uh, as my birthday was in, in January. And uh, uh, I therefore stayed on at school until I was in the third year of the sixth form. Um, but in 1945, in December, I came up to take a scholarship here, which I failed to get. Uh, this was at King's. King's, uh, King's, yes. And, um, but then, uh, that was in December 1945, and there were then scholarship exams held also at Easter. Mm. And I was advised by uh, Christopher Morris, who was one of those interviewing me uh, in December here in King's, that I ought to, it would be a better bet if I tried for Jesus. He said, I think Jesus would suit you. <laughs> so um, I tried uh, uh, again for the Easter examinations, scholarship examinations, and hooked an exhibition at that point, and therefore stayed on until I was called up, essentially, in the summer of, uh, of 1946, um, having secured a place here. And Jesus, as was... Uh, as was very common then, I think, in that generation, uh, demanded that uh, all uh, those who were coming up from school should, uh, should uh, uh, have their military service behind them when they arrived. So that is what happened. I spent two years in the army hmm. uh, as a conscript uh, before coming up in October 1946. Uh, my father was called up, as I say, uh, and therefore he was away from 1938 until 1946. Um, and when he was demobilized, uh, he returned to the Bristol and West Building Society. Um, uh, meanwhile, he had become a, a warrant writer, a warrant officer writer, and uh, but he was too old for uh, sea service uh, uh, in the Second War, and therefore um, he was at various uh, shore stations known in the Navy as stone frigates. Uh, <laughs> and my mother and I would spend part of each holiday following him around the country. Uh, to uh, He was called back up to uh, in 38 to Mount Wise, uh, but uh, in terms of what that is, but uh, then went to one of the greatest uh, naval bases of the Second World War, which was HM, very appropriately named HMS Lucifer in Swansea, <laughs> which came under the, the, the under the authority of an even greater naval base, which was Rear Admiral Cardiff, uh, <laughs> and their their remit was to uh, sweep the Bristol Channel from uh, of uh, magnetic mines. But he then went from there to uh, Liverpool, when the Western Approaches Command was. Uh, set up in 1942 and was there until the, for the rest of the war, until after, after the defeat of Germany, he spent, um, he spent uh, a few months uh, over the winter of 1945-46 in, uh, in Germany, in Kiel and Hamburg in particular, but going elsewhere, trying to pick up um, all the documentation of the uh, of the uh, Battle of the Atlantic campaign from the U-boat side, and all that uh, documentation was uh, there was um, uh, returned to the Admiralty in in the UK for uh, see if it was of, of future use, and is now in the National Archives here. Yeah, yeah. But uh, and that that was a disaster. I mean, it was a terrible uh, winter to uh, to be travelling around uh, Europe, and he caught uh, tuberculosis. Uh, while, um, while while there, and uh, was never the same man again. He died in 1960, 61. Uh, but so, 
that, that was... Uh, where, where were you a conscript? You said you were a conscript for two years. Uh, where did you... I was... Um, within England, was this? It, it, was, it, it was indeed in, uh, in, in, in England. I, after preliminary training, um, I had opted to join the Intelligence Corps as a lot of people in that uh, in that uh, um, entry had, had had done, and we went we did all the initial I Corps training, and then in 1947, um, uh, the Control Commission took over in Germany from the military uh, uh, establishment. And there were four or five hundred intelligence corps officers, uh, well, not, not uh, uh, NCOs and officers, uh, uh, that were suddenly uh, uh, without a job in, in Germany and uh, all flooded back to, uh, to Aldershot. And uh, those of us who were in training were told to get out. And uh, so, and were <laughs> offered the option, and the softest option was to transfer to the Royal Army Educational Corps where you were guaranteed three stripes or more, uh, and uh, uh, the, or, or almost the potential offer anyway of a, of a commission if you were willing to sign on for another five years, which I was not. Um, so I spent the last uh, the last period of my uh, military service uh, in the RAE, C, in different places, but in 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 England I was. Um, I was um, about to go to uh, to Germany um, and was uh, uh, sent to Drummond Castle in on 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 Lohmann, which was Nikor depot being prepared for where, where people were prepared for uh, uh, overseas service. I had all the inoculations, and then uh, um, that was in September. 1948, and I then my release came through just in time to uh, <laughs> to um, uh, come to Cambridge for the for, for the October term. Well, while, while, while you were at school, were were you apart from the academic work? Were there other things that you were particularly interested in? Music? Oh, everything, everything. It was a it was a small school, and you became a you, you became an outrageously uh, an outrageously large fish and had. Tremendously small pond. So uh, games were you? Oh, everything. Uh, I was, um, I was head prefect. I was, uh, I ran. I was the, whatever it was called, the head of the undergraduate. I mean the, uh, the, uh, the um, um, junior head of the head of the corps. I was, I don't know, captain of rugby and cricket and all that. It was a very small school in that way. <laughs> and music were um, you? Were you interested in music or drama? No, um, uh, that was the, uh, that's been the the biggest uh, uh, the biggest um, uh, absence or lacuna uh, uh, all the way through. Really, I mean, I I, I, I laboured as a small child before uh, going off to boarding school at the age of uh, 10 in 1938. I laboured uh, at the behest of my mother uh, with piano lessons uh, and that was a symbol of uh, escaping from a uh, working class background and uh, to be becoming a uh, uh, sort of petit bourgeois clerical um, uh, uh, horizons. Uh, but uh, when I got to Colston's there was really nothing uh, uh, I say because of the war and all that, uh, there was there was really no continuity. So I, I without uh, without any great regrets at that time, I uh, I ceased to uh, uh, to play an instrument. Uh, that's pretty. I mean, yeah. in retrospect. Uh, do you, do you like listening to music? Sorry. Do you listen to a lot of music? Yes, quite a lot. Mm. Quite a lot, and we we. Uh, we go to um, uh, West Road uh, mm. uh, very regularly, and more particularly now we have a, 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 a minute base in uh, 
in, in Norfolk. Uh, uh, every parish church in, in north coast of Norfolk is, has a music festival in the summer and mm. we, we uh, are regular attenders at the um, Burnham Market Festival. Mm. Uh, we were last, uh, last, uh, last Saturday in fact uh, uh, at one of the concerts there. Um, are, there, are there any composers who you particularly like? Uh, oh. Has it changed over your life, I imagine? Well, I've always been uh, uh, very fond of, of the uh, Baroque uh, uh, composers, Scarlatti in particular, I suppose. And uh, um, so I listen to, we, we listen to, those, uh, to, to uh, that genre mm -hmm. of music uh, quite a lot. Uh, but it, it's never been it's never been a prominent uh, uh, a prominent uh, 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 commitment. Do you do you write to um, do you have to be in complete silence to write, or do you like music or other sounds when you're writing? Um, I don't demand a, a background of. Uh, of any kind, so on the, on the whole, I prefer silence. So, hmm. um, and we're not, uh, we are not very well, um, uh, very well e e e equipped, put it that way, for uh, uh, listening to music. Um, I mean, I, d I don't have, uh, I, I don't have the, uh, the means immediately to hand anyway to uh, to play music when in my when I'm working at this. Hmm. this yeah. Uh, I also have a um, have a have a t uh, stop on my uh, technical evolution in the sense that uh, uh, although I've tried and tried, uh, there is something that happens between there and my right hand, hmm. which. Um, is um, uh, there's no substitute for uh, uh, for it, and I find it very difficult to compose when typing or on a on a tape. So uh, I have to uh, I have to write it all out uh, longhand, scratch it about, and make a terrible mess. Uh, mm. um, but that's the only way in which it uh, it seems to work out in any um, in any um, reasonably. Uh, uh, cultivated English, uh, put it that way. Once you've so, written it all out longhand, do you then type it, or does someone else type it? Or I then forget it, and someone else types it. <laughs> but as I say, my, uh, my technical uh, um, uh, evolution uh, stopped in the, um, in the early 50s, I suppose. Uh, and uh, the other thing was that I had that... Uh, that um, uh, Deadly asset, uh, which was a secretary. <laughs> um, so we've got you to Jesus College now. Um, in about 1948, was it? It was indeed in 1948. Yes. Um, who, who were your teachers in Jesus then? Uh, or in, in, in Cambridge? History. Yes, or in Cambridge in general. Who who inspired you most? Oh. Um, in, 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 in Jesus, uh, my main mentor, I suppose, was, uh, was Charles Wilson, because uh, I identified with, with, with him and his work um, as an economic historian. And, and by that time, I was, uh, I was uh, really committed to, uh, uh, to economic history, within the syllabus, uh, more particularly. And, um, Charles in uh, Charles Wilson in in, in uh, Jesus was the was the, uh, uh, the the person whom in that sense I I identified with uh, um, and uh, Vivian Fisher was my tutor who was also a medieval historian uh, but and was uh, a tutor in the in the in the Cambridge sense uh, too um, and they. Vivian Fisher was. Uh, did you know him at all? No. Uh, uh, he he was a um, formidable uh, character. He had one one boss eye, and he he could fix you with uh, with his boss eye, and uh, 
It was a highly intimida intimidating affair. It was, it was not too intimidating initially because um, uh, I had been very interested in rowing. Uh, not to, uh, there was no rowing in, uh, in 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 Colston's at all. But uh, my father was uh, uh, was uh, 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 knew about rowing, and uh, we used to row quite a lot when on holiday. Um, and I came up. Uh, uh, eager to join the boat club in Jesus. This was in 1948 when Jesus won the Grand at Henley and uh, I joined, Junie joined the boat club and met Vivian Fisher for the first time as my tutor a couple of days later and he said, what are we doing? I said, I joined the boat club. He said, you resign immediately. He said, no, <laughs> no exhibition and scholar of Jesus can join the boat club. It was a total commitment. He was. <laughs> and uh, I was young and uh, obedient and uh, and uh, did what he asked, and I wish I'd never done so. <laughs> but there it was. Um, but um, and in in the faculty, I mean, I did. I I I, I ran through the uh, the uh, tripos in a standard way. Uh, the person, however, whom uh, I identified with in the faculty more than with any other uh, was uh, uh, Edward Wellborn. Now, Edward Wellborn, who was then senior tutor of Emmanuel, he became master of Emmanuel, uh, he had, um, uh, as a pupil, uh, uh, been at Market Raisin Grammar School. And Charles Wilson also had been at Market, really? Market Raisin uh, Grammar School. And uh, they had, um, uh, uh, they were devoted uh, uh, allies of, uh, of each other uh, when in, in Cambridge. And uh, Charles said, you go to Edward Wellborn. Well he said, won't be many, many people there, but uh, he said, you stick with it. <laughs> and, uh, um, and he said, be careful. He said, uh, Wellborn will come out, of, come out with a string of impossible things. And at the end of the line, you will say, I can't take this anymore. He said, but at that point, be very careful. He said, that's probably the only thing he's really thought about <laughs> and can defend the limit. And that was all duly transpired. And I went to Edward Wellborn lectures. That were, not a sentence was repeated all three years as an undergraduate. Um, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, one of the smallest of the Mill Lane lecture rooms <laughs> in the upper room, Tuesday and Thursday at 12 o'clock. And um, what was he lecturing on? Oh, okay. whatever came into his mind, <laughs> uh, really. It was called. Some technological factors in English economic history. Oh, but, uh, left it wide open. Yes, but uh, he, he was a Johnsonian figure, and um, uh, he he wrote almost nothing. He wrote uh, a little book. Uh, in those days when you you wrote in order to get your fellowship, and now you get a fellowship in order to write. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Edward wrote well one. Uh, got a prize fellowship and wrote a little book on the Northumberland and Durham miners. And that's about the only thing he ever wrote. But he read voraciously and had an extraordinary memory. Um, and there were no frontiers to his mind at all. And that was, uh, was I mean, uh, fascinating. He had a devoted band, a very small band of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, undergraduates uh, and uh, subsequently people but he, he was uh, written off as a clown by the, mm. by the history faculty. Mm. Uh, I learned a great deal from him. Mm. Were you lectured by John Saltmarsh? Yes, indeed. And Christopher Morris. Uh, this was uh, John Saltmarsh uh, lectured on. Well, uh, I, uh, I have reason to, uh, I have reason to know because uh, in 1955, when I became an assistant lecturer in the faculty, I inherited the second half of John Saltmarsh's uh, lecture course. It, the, the provenance of it was as follows. But Clapham, when he was professor, lectured on the whole of English economic history, from the beginning until the latest uh, crisis of the pound. Uh, and um, uh, um, that was three times a week, 
Monday, Wednesday and Friday, lecture room 9 in Mill, in Mill Lane, and uh, uh, the whole thing was, uh, was covered. Uh, when he uh, died, then, and I'm not sure whether he'd retired before he died, but anyway, when, uh, when uh, uh, Clapham's uh, course ended, uh, but remained, the, but the course remained in the tripos, mm. uh, uh, it was taken over, no, no one could do the whole thing since, mm. since then. It was taken over by John Saltmarsh during the first half and Charles Wilson during the second half. Um, the, the break coming uh, at devious points in the 17th century. Anyway, as soon as I was appointed, Charlie Wilson got out. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, in the middle of August when I was appointed, mm. um, Charles Wilson said, you're going to do that uh, in the Michaelmas term. <laughs> and uh, I'd never worked so hard in my life to try and keep up. But anyway, I did the second half uh, of, um, of, of that course. And I remember going to uh, John Saltmarsh's rooms uh, so that he could instruct me and where he stopped and where I had to begin. Mm. As I say, it wasn't mm. a straight line. It was mm. depended on what the, uh, what the topic was. Uh, and anyway, I knocked on the door, and this high-pitched voice said, come in, he said. And uh, when I went in, he was sitting on the top of a very tall stepladder. And his dining room table had been completely extended, and the table was full of little bits of paper. I wondered what on earth I'd walked into. And uh, he was vice provost, and he was planning the seating of a king's feast. <laughs> and, and, uh, so trying to ensure that uh, the, the, uh, uh, the appropriate people were sitting next to one another, or the inappropriate people were not sitting next to one another. Mm. And um, so I took over <laughs> in, that, um, in, in that way in, in 1955. Um, but anyway, uh, my own, uh, I went to the standard uh, uh, lecture, I went to Christopher Morris, uh, on the history of uh, political thought in my second year. Was Christopher a good lecturer or mid uh, yes, moderate? Yes, in, 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 indeed. He, he, he was a very, uh, how can I put it, uh, uh, he, he had a, a, a very uh, specific style and it was all, he, he linked uh, um, uh, the Topics of his uh, political thought lectures with uh, uh, what was uh, what was going on at the uh, uh, at, um, uh, at, at the time, and uh, he had a lot of uh, things to say about uh, politesse. I remember and how he would change notices and put uh, put please in front of uh, uh, minor, minatory instructions. <laughs> That kind of thing, but uh, uh, no, I, I I went to all his uh, all his lectures. My second year, this was. Did you go to any of the famous John Saltmarsh lectures where he would uh, lecture about the stirrup? Reputedly, he used to lecture on the stirrup and demonstrate its effects by charging down the lecture room with the board pointer, and occasionally nearly impaling one of the undergraduates. <laughs> this I, is a... I can't remember that, but I, I remember the. Uh, uh, the, uh, the content of the uh, of the lectures very well, and uh, I also went to a sort of rival uh, course, which uh, Frank Salter oh, yes. was delivering, mm -hmm. and that was again on uh, uh, Eng English economic history. But uh, I don't know whether they divided the field, but uh, Saltmarsh was mainly on on. Medieval, and I think that uh, Salter uh, uh, carried through, but I, I don't know. I still may have some of those notes, but I can't remember at the minute. Um, but, uh, what, I what about um, someone you collaborated with later, uh, only Poston? Oh, I, I, I'm going to say yes. Um, I went to Poston's lectures uh, uh, clearly, and. Uh, um, Subsequently, uh, I had uh, a great deal to do with with with, with, uh, with Boston, 
when I became a lecturer, um, or assistant lecturer. Um, at the time, when I was an undergraduate, uh, Charles Wilson had fallen out of Boston, uh, whom he thought was a, uh, a jumped up uh, refugee, uh, which was not uncommon, uh, that, that sort of thought. He was too clever by hand, too <laughs> clever by half, he, uh, Charlie Wilson thought, of Boston. And uh, Wilson tried to prevent me from actually going to Boston's lecture, <laughs> lectures. So uh, I, uh, I, I did in fact go to, to Boston's lectures, um, <laughs> uh, but concealed the fact from Charles Wilson until uh, uh, he rumbled the fact or I told him and uh, we uh, and uh, I said I tried to defend Boston and uh, and said uh, well you must admit Charles that he he doesn't know about the manor and Charles replied he bloody well ought to he was brought up on one <laughs> <laughs> and, but uh, they they subsequently became uh, reconciled, uh, mm. but um, uh, Jesus uh, was um, oh, the historians in Jesus and Jesus in general were uh, was um, it was it was a, a, an isolated college. It was away from the from the the main line of uh, Cambridge colleges. Uh, it was uh, it existed in rural conservatism uh, mm. uh, in its own grounds and. Uh, uh, it was more inward looking, I think, than uh, uh, many other uh, colleges, and uh, it had its own very specific uh, Anglican tradition. Mm. I mean, uh, again, that was rural Ang Anglicanism. I understood mm. it perfectly well from uh, Wingfield. Uh, mm. Did you go to the chapel? I did indeed, yes. Uh, did you, I... and, uh, although I think technically the chapel was not compulsory, it was assumed by most of the undergraduates that it was, and by the scholars and exhibition and exhibitioners in particular that it, that it was. And the uh, uh, Gardner Smith, who was the great uh, Orthodox uh, uh, dean of chapel in uh, in, in Jesus, um, uh, um, who was a highly conservative. Uh, uh, figure of whom there's an innumerable uh, uh, stories, uh, uh, but uh, Gardner Smith, uh, uh, quite illegally, I believe, by 1948, he would get the get the head porter to stand behind the curtain in the chapel and prick off uh, uh, all the people who'd been there, so he would know who who, who had gone, and more particularly who had not gone uh, to, um, uh, to to chapel. Um, uh, and he was an arch, uh, an arch conservative, uh, um, one way or another. So, and I was, I was in, in, in the choir of Jesus and and, and so on. Uh, How would you describe yourself now in your religious position? Oh, um, uh, again, a, 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 I mean, a, a traditional. A traditional Anglican, I would suppose. Yes, um, I am not as devout as my as my wife, who is much more committed uh, 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 to uh, to uh, uh, the church than I am. But uh, um, oh well, hmm. uh, I I tag along, so to speak. Hmm. Okay. Well, um, were there any of your undergraduate contemporaries who you kept in touch with since those days, or uh, shall we move on to your? Presume you went on and did a doc, doctorate, or did you go straight into a lectureship? Or I, I, I didn't, didn't do a doctorate. I, mean, no. I was in that generation mm. before it became either mandatory or indeed um, advantageous. Mm. Uh, uh, it, it seemed at the time. I now wish I had done a mm. doctorate. Uh, uh, my absence of a doctorate. Uh, is now concealed by the fact that I have a higher doctorate. So I could call myself doctor, but I never, right. never got a PhD. Mm. Uh, and having hooked a um, a um, uh, uh, research fellowship at Jesus uh, in the uh, in the autumn of when I graduated in 1951, was it 1952? I'm sorry, 
um, uh, Charles Wilson uh, said, well, my boy, he said, now, now you've got your knees under a high table, you can resign mm. from the Register of Graduate Students. He mm. says, mm. and again, I obeyed him, and I wish I hadn't now. Mm. Mm. What did you, uh, so this is, what, what year was it that you got your uh, research fellowship? What, what year was it? 1952. What were you going to research, even if you weren't going to do that? Oh, I'd, I'd already been doing that for a year. I mean, I started, uh, I knew what I was wanting to do um, at the time as I graduated in 1951. Um, I, uh, I was working on the, on the brewing industry in the 18th century. Uh, 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 again, I, I mean, it was... Um, It was um, um, not a not recognised really as a as an appropriate academic subject in 1951. Um, the uh, the uh, reputation of the industry was uh, totally polarised between uh, those people who were um, uh, probably from brewing families or connected with the industry directly, or those people who were viewed it as the incarnation of the devil, uh, one way or another. I mean, mm. who were from non-conformist uh, uh, and Methodist uh, persuasions. And um, uh, it, it, all this is now uh, water under the bridge a very long time ago. But uh, people would say, oh, what, what is your research? And I'd say I'm working on the brewing industry in the 18th century. There would be either silence, uh, a pregnant silence, for a few seconds, or people would say, "Oh, how amusing!" <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, but um, the advantage was that there had been really no serious academic work mm. on the industry at all, uh, historically, um, and. Uh, that was doubly fortuitous and doubly fortunate because um, at that time almost all the um, uh, the the, uh, the brewing firms in the country, whether in London or Burton or elsewhere, were still uh, run by the family or, or, or owned by the family, if not run by the family, and uh, therefore all and and uh, family firms tend not to throw away their their records. And I found uh, 18th century records in every major brewery in London. And uh, uh, that, uh, that made an enormous difference. Um, and one of, the, uh, one of the possible advantages of, uh, of uh, um, uh, not uh, uh, tailoring the research uh, to um, uh, uh, the terms of a doctorate and the doctoral thesis here was that uh, uh, again uh, uh, Charles uh, Wilson who, who said well I'm uh, now he said you've got plenty of time he said uh, write a big book write a big book and uh, uh, I, I was able to get a, uh, an assistant lectureship in the faculty in 1955 which gave me continuity of employment uh, because my research fellowship had run out uh, uh, then in in fifty five, and um, uh, so I was not under any compulsion, any, any pressure to, to publish. So um, uh, the the research was in, eventually published, but as late as nineteen fifty nine by the CUP, and that was. The book was too long for anyone to read and too expensive for anyone to buy <laughs> <laughs> at that time. Mm. But uh, it stood me into good stead, mm. I have say. Your interest, I mean, this is a bit of a diversion, but, and we mentioned it before, but you, the fact that you were the leading historian of uh, brewing and, and a drink to a large extent in England made, made you into the supervisor of the, one of the people who taught me, which was Brian Harrison. Oh, yes. Yes, and, and I was very honoured because uh, Brian Harrison came over from Oxford to be supervised. Uh, you were still here. Yes. You were still here, and and he came yes, over. Yes, at that mm. at that time. Yes, uh, mm. I I was here. Um, uh, my 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 research fellowship ran out, as I said, in 1955, mm. 
and uh, that coincided with uh, the um, resignation of the only historian in Queens, Alan Barker, and uh, uh, so Queens were desperate to, uh, uh, to um, as I say, this was in the in the summer of uh, 1955, and Alan, Alan had uh, simply thrown in his uh, thrown in his hand and returned to Eton, um, and uh, as beat, and uh, I uh, uh, Queens uh, Queens elected me. And uh, I was flung in uh, as the only historian in Queens to organize the whole of their teaching uh, and do uh, quite a lot of it myself. Uh, uh, from the Michaelmas term, mm -hmm. at the same time as, as I say, preparing uh, all of Charlie Wilson's lectures that he'd, <laughs> he'd run away from. Uh, <laughs> um, so it was, I was not married then, mm -hmm. and that made all the difference, in mm -hmm. fact. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but. Um, I was at Queen's from 1955 until 1968, and it was during that time that I think Brian was Brian Harrison. Mm. Uh, what was he like as a student? He was an enormously hard-working, organised man, as I remember. Tremendously so. Mm. I mean, right from the start. He knew exactly what he wanted to do, he knew exactly how he was going to do it, and uh, was only uh, looking for a very occasional piece of advice from supervisor. He had all those little cards, which uh, I don't know if you ever saw his card index. Yes, I system, did. Yes, I did. Yes. Which greatly influenced yeah. me. <laughs> I borrowed all his undergraduate notes for, um, at Oxford and uh, typed them all out once again and then tried to internalize them to help me through my exams. But they were fantastic notes on all the books he'd read and yeah. lectures. Yes, and, uh, no, he, was, he was a, a fine scholar. Mm. Still is, actually. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, well. wh which other historians, um, you must have known Donald Coleman uh, well. Uh, yes, I did. Um, uh, I knew him uh, when at, uh, at, at LSE. Um, it should be said that um, um, in 1950, one after I graduated, and I, I had grown up completely within the Cambridge uh, uh, tradition, which was very parochial in many ways, um, as far as economic history was concerned, certainly. And uh, um, uh, I then joined T.S. Ashton's seminar in LSE, and went down every week uh, to uh, uh, to. Uh, the Institute of Historical Research, where he ran it. And uh, I met uh, Donald Coleman and, and all the other CEO. Uh, Fisher. Galea, the, mm. uh, Fisher. And Jack Fisher, yes. So who was a, I never, very difficult to know what, what uh, Jack Fisher uh, believed in or didn't believe in. I mean, maybe it would be easier to work out what he didn't believe in, what he did believe in. He was very much a maverick in that mm. way. Um, but uh, I knew, and T.S. Ashton was extremely kind to me, and uh, I learned a great deal from uh, mm. from uh, from T.S.A. in that year, uh, from 1951 to 1952 in the summer. Uh, was it? and I knew D Donald. Uh, uh, Donald was uh, he 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 had uh, calmed down. Uh, 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 a bit anyway, uh, by the time he came to Cambridge uh, as professor. But he, he was a tiger when he was uh, in LSE. He was, um, he was uh, quite unforgiving. He knew exactly what he, uh, what he, what he believed in and uh, uh, more particularly he knew exactly what he didn't believe in, what he was hostile to and was, uh, was very much uh, uh, He, 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 he was able to end a friendship more abruptly than many of the other people whom I, I have known. Um, but, uh, but, uh, but clearly he, he had a very, powerful, uh, a very powerful intellect, very powerful brain. And uh, he, ran, he ran a, uh, 
an informal um, it's too, uh, too institutionalized to call it a, a seminar, but people, we, we used to meet in his flat about twice a term uh, in the Charing Cross Road where, where he had a flat in those days. And uh, uh, he, he, Donald, would always, would, would always cook the supper and uh, we would supply the wine, and, uh, which he, sometimes he, he felt was uh, not as good as it ought to have been. Um, uh, and uh, he would, uh, we would, we would all all hold forth, and uh, that was uh, uh, that was very enlightening. More, more particularly uh, uh, coming uh, coming from Cambridge into the big world of uh, of, uh, of of LSE and the London uh, London colleges. Um, uh, but uh, that, uh, so I knew Donald uh, uh, quite well. Um, on those terms, so to speak, uh, uh, but I have never been um, a, a fellow member of a faculty mm. uh, with with him. Uh, um, did but, you uh, did you know R. H. Tawney? Did you ever meet him? Uh, I, I I did meet him. Uh, this was. Uh, Wait a minute. In nineteen in nineteen fifty, it should be said that when I came when I came up, mm. I have one fr I had one friend in court in Cambridge, one friend at court in Cambridge, mm. and that was Teddy Rich. Oh yes, uh, E. Rich, who mm. was then master of St Catherine's. Mm. Uh, by uh, happen chance, uh, Teddy Rich had been a, a, a pupil at, at Colston's, mm. and. Uh, his brother, his younger brother, uh, whose initials I can't remember, was the gym master and the German master at uh, at Colson's until he uh, was called up and went away for the war. Um, uh, but um, Teddy Richard, uh, Ivor Richard was, uh, mm. um, Ivor Richard told Teddy uh, that uh, I had um, got a scholarship, and uh, Teddy Rich welcomed me um, and invited me to tea when I got to, uh, got to Cambridge. And um, so I, I knew, uh, I knew uh, uh, Teddy Rich, who, was, who really wasn't on the, at the centre of the faculty but, uh, in any way. But anyway, uh, there was Teddy Rich, and uh, in 19... 50, must have been 51, I think, possibly 50, possibly 50. Um, uh, Teddy Rich told me that I ought to, he was, Teddy Rich was then uh, treasurer, I think it was, or, or possibly secretary, I think treasurer, of the Economic History Society. And uh, uh, the, uh, he told me that um, I ought to Joined the Economic History Society. Uh, undergraduates then did not do so, but uh, Teddy Rich said, "Well, uh, I, the, the the next conference, uh, which was always held in the Easter vacation, is at Worcester, and I'm going there because we're going on in our caravan uh, for a holiday, and you come with me, and we'll go to the Economic History uh, Society uh, conference at Worcester. It was the second conference, I think, that the." Society had held, so I, uh, I I did that, and to my surprise, we started driving to Oxford. And I thought this isn't the way to Worcester, but it was Worcester College. I was going to ask you. my mind that we were <laughs> it was Worcester College. Office. I was a, an innocent abroad in those mm. days. They were very very limited uh, um, horizons uh, of awareness, range of awareness, and so on. But anyway, uh, there. I went to the conference there, and there was Tony. And uh, uh, Tony made an imme immense impression. He was very avuncular to me, and was very kind to me. 